Hello, I am really pleased to be joined by vet and anatomy and physiology lecturer from the University of Copenhagen, Dr. Vibeke Elbrond. Vibeke, thank you so much for joining me. We are running a seminar in April all about important trunk transitions. So Vibeke, first of all, what are trunk transitions? Hi, Gillian, and thank you for inviting me for this seminar. I'm really looking forward to it because trunk transitions are really important. And what is trunk transition, as you asked? I can show it here on the, uh, on the big folder that I've got up here. Trunk transition will be transitions between regions, for instance, the cervicals here and the thoracics, between the thoracic and the lumbars and between the lumbar region and the sacral region. And, and the biomechanically, these regions are important because the biomechanics changes, the movement changes between these regions. So the cervical region and the thoracic region, each of them shows different motion and different range of motions. And we also see that uh, in the thoracolumbar region, we have differences in the movements between the thorac thoracic uh, region and the lumbar region and so and so on and each of these regions are very vulnerable as this changes in movement but we're going to have a look now at the structures which are arranged in the regions it's both muscle it's uh, organs it's vessels uh, it's it's uh, all the fascia, also the myofascial kinetic lines. We will have a look at the different conditions that we can see in the regions and put on top of that uh, which structures that are related to it and which of the myofascial kinetic lines that can explain dysfunctions in the regions. And we have a lot of things to go through because there are so many exciting things to understand in all three regions because they have each their own specific uh, conditions in, in different, uh, uh, what's it called, not syndromes, <laughs> dysfunctions. dysfunctions. So Vivica, you are really famous for your research into the equine myofascial lines, and it's going to be fascinating to tie this in together with these different junctions in the horse. And at our recent conference, we had a lot of people asking questions about anomalies and pathologies in these different areas. Is this something you're going to be covering on this seminar? I will cover as much as possible that we can uh, to understand uh, and to get the understanding of how things are working together. We will have a look at, at uh, for instance, the cervical thoracic junction, where we have a lot of anomalia uh, in the vertebrae and imbalances in, in this region. We will have a look at the diaphragm, which is a kind of overseen uh, structure, and uh, it it has very often, been, or it is very often involved in tensions and in misalignments of the body, but also the lumbosacral transition. Have a look at the sacrum and uh, the SI joint. We will have a look here also at the balance between the sacrum and the lower lumbar uh, vertebrae and have a look at the biomechanics in this region and how this biomechanic can be uh, can be hampered in relation to dysfunctions in in the sacrum yes so we will have a look at at uh, many different kind of things in relation to the transitional uh, regions here yeah sure that's fantastic. This course is for equestrian professional therapists and mm. anybody really working with horses. So I hope that lots of people will be able to join us because there's so much to gain from this course.